Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of Liga and the Eredivisie which gives me a good excuse to wear my new Ajax jersey for the for very, very first time. This video has been a long time in the making, I had to postpone the shooting of it multiple times. Uh, it has been crazy days and yeah it is good that there is no actual um, soccer being played because other, uh, otherwise I would have a really hard time keeping up with stuff but i hope things will cool to come down soon and vacation is coming as well as i've said i had to put two to it. i would have loved to shoot this after the um, uh, season actually ended the problem is there was an international break there and then yeah uh, everything uh went crazy but still we have the time um i'm gonna go in the order first league uh, then the eredivisie um and we look of course how uh the teams who are the winners and the losers um for me it's always also important to kind of have an overview which teams actually go in the champions league and what round will they enter um then uh, who is promoted relegated to get that out of the way um and then look also at the uh, performances um you know which teams did better than expected which teams did worse than expected we know the final standings but to kind of really uh, reiterate who were actually the winners and the losers of the season. And then we go a little bit in depth uh, team by team through the entire thing uh, to look at um, uh, how the seasons of these teams actually uh, develop, which is always interesting. Although since we have a total of 38 teams to go through it, I probably will do the lower teams um, a whole lot faster. Always press the pause button if you want to have it because there are some interesting details in there for sure. And of course, the most interesting would be to then uh, match up the changes with actual results. But you know, um, so we'll start with League A, and of course, we know that PSG not only are the other are the uh, champions, they go in the group stage together with Marseille, who are one of the better, uh, bigger surprises of the season and then Monaco with a late surge as you'll see makes it into the Champions League uh, qualification round like they were last year and just fell short I think against Shakhtar Donetsk which uh, will not happen this season yeah but that uh, is not a happy note uh, to make. Uh, the two Breton rivals make it to the uh, Europa League group stage with Rennes and not not actually winning the cup despite only finishing ninth which was still uh, considering the last season very positive finish uh, and Nice is in the players for the Conference League. Uh, nice, a team that were out of it, um, were on the up, but actually undid themselves a little bit. Uh, huge stories are, of course, the relegation, um, where we have two he French heavyweights going down in Saint Etienne and Girondin de Bordeaux, uh, which seems rather, rather odd to see these two giants uh, being relegated. And Metz also was a mid table team last season going down, so uh, there are three obvious losers there. And coming up are Toulouse, um, now uh, all the Redbird capital as are uh, Milan, uh, who have done actually a pretty good job there. Uh, Ajaxo uh, back for uh, in almost a decade and Auxerre, another team that actually were French champions, uh, not, you know, in my lifetime <laughs> as a soccer fan. Uh, so another team that is actually nice to have there. So I think it's a, a very interesting mix. Uh, would I see saint etienne Girondin de Bordeaux uh, in the top league over these teams, yes, I would. But I think it, it's a very interested, uh, interesting um, uh, promotion group there. Towards the right, you see uh, the difference between the uh, the points that that the teams actually achieved in the left column towards the points that were expected preseason. So in the very first uh, prediction, and we can see uh, then the differences, and they are um, graphically in with the bars where green bars, of course, mean. Great performance, red bars are really, really, really bad. And so if we look, I mean, uh, the winners, it's very clear that Strasbourg, and uh, it will become even more apparent a little bit, little bit later on, are the, big, uh, are the biggest winners of the French season, uh, with uh, particularly Marseille, Nice, uh, Nantes, and Brest outperforming themselves. I stopping short of Rennes, um, Rennes, Lens, and uh, um, who else was in there? Rennes, not and Nice. I, I stop a little bit uh, short there because you know, uh, in in the end, the the season goals were a little bit higher. On the negative side, um, of course, Saint Etienne uh, has is a big one. We have Lyon, huge disappointment. Quality-wise, that squad should easily make it into the uh, Champions League. 
uh, there and Lille as the champions also are rather rather disappointing but of course uh, we have to look at Metz and Bordeaux as well. Montpellier, uh, you know, maybe a much worse finish than they would expect. We'll see a little bit more about that a little bit later. But uh, I think it's often a little bit better to look at also the change in the ratings because it gives you a more relative change uh, for the simple reason that if you have a 10-point drop when you were expected an 80-point season or if you have, were expected to have a 50-point season, that's, uh, the, the, the 10 points way more for the 50 point season. So, uh, looking at the ratings changes, we again see that Strasbourg is a, a whole lot more the winner than we had before. And now, uh, Rennes, Six Art Libre, Esther Durans, uh, Brest, and actually Trois, Trois, a promoted team, did really, really, really well. Whereas on the Nair, and like Montpellier is actually the big loser. Uh, but again, I think, yes, they had a worse season than expected. Um, Lille sticks stick out, Lyon still stick out, um, and Saint Etienne, Metz, and Bordeaux, of course, as well. Going through the individual season, we have to talk about a whole lot about PSG, but let's first go uh, Lille. You see, starting out to be projected among the top four, and then a continuous decline. There was a steady phase in there, um, you know. Of course, they were gonna drop because it was really, really low off the heights. But uh, it seems like that come November, they kind of stabilized and going up and down, have, having a good phase in, in between. But towards the end of the season, it all uh, came off. The wheels came, came, came off and the European finish uh, got more and more out of reach. You already see, um, I on the left side, um, if you haven't seen, uh, of course, the development of the expected points. And you see the entire league in there. Of course, there's one team that is way above the rest. You can take a guess. Uh, and on the right side, we do the same thing uh, for the ratings, uh, the way it developed. And you also see how dense actually the league overall is. There's not much between, there's just one team that's just above the rest of the others. And you see, especially towards the end, the fight for the, Euro the European spot, it was really, 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 really tight. And it little fell out of that uh, is rather disappointing. PSG is, of course, the team up top. Um, Finishing almost where we expected them to to begin. They had a really, really good start. You know, the big rise is when Messi came, then suddenly the ratings shifted up. Um, but then it was a steady decline from they are only, uh, you know, around at the end of March, uh, at the end of February, early, early March, you know, when they were about to beat Real Madrid, when it really looked good. There they had a, a period of sustained success. And then the wheels came, 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 came off. At that point, they had the league uh, sealed up. Mostly last minute wins, so uh, not overall a great season for PSG, but a, very, a dominant, but not great season. It's, it's really, really weird to say it this way. Uh, Monaco, uh, rather disappointing through to Nick, uh, to, uh, under Nico Kovac, uh, really falling out of uh, European contention at times as well. Um, then uh, Clément uh, came in and very, very late on, Monaco really seemed to be uh, one of the strongest teams. Those would have actually qualified for the group stage if it wasn't for a last minute equalizer at Lens. Um, so strong finished and then still falling short and it leaves a sour taste. Uh, Lyon, a uh, steady decline, especially what happened in December, is really what undid their season in many, many ways. Uh, squad was, if you look at the ratings, it's rather, rather stable. Uh, but especially then what happened uh, early in the, in the year, there's a lot of flattering to see wins and then with losses again, they just could not gather uh, any momentum. And it is a team that is in a, a desperate need for a big rebuild. There was a, a, a point where you re really thought they could even challenge for the Europa League. Um, no, it never was happening. And Lyon has to be seen as one of the biggest disappointments of the season. I think the ratings are a little bit propped up by uh, decent showings in Europe. Marseille, uh, very interesting graph. Uh, if you look at the left, uh, there's one spike up and one spike down. But in the end, it's always a uh, steady up on the uh, San Paoli and especially a really, really good finish. Yes, uh, up and down here, there, they almost were about to lose second place, but they made it into the Champions League. And Marseille, big team finishing second. Uh, I think it's good for the league if there's a very potent Marseille team present. Uh, Start Rennes, overall a very positive season, but you have you see the ups and downs. I mean, uh, the start not so great, so that actually took you out of the Champions League. But then a really really good stretch up until the end of oh, of, of, of the year, then things fell flat. Then you picked it up up again, but you finished kind of steady. Rennes 
could have probably finished in the Champions League for sure. Uh, Lars just could not keep up with the good finish last season, again uh, finishing out of Europe. A good push towards the end, but um, it was only two or two to do the fall in November. Uh, Montpellier, a uh, steady season for most, most of the time, but then uh, running out of gas. A nice overall steady uh, under Galtier, it was a transition season. You started well, um, but then you know again, um, the push towards uh, a higher finish just fell short, but Nice definitely one of the better, better teams. So the question is now if Galtier is leaving uh, them, what's gonna happen? Mets, yeah, uh, disaster curve. Uh, even a strong finish could not undo the relegation. Uh, Saint Etienne, yes, similar disaster curve, but what's even worse is that you saw that um, mid January to February, uh, even March, it actually looked promising and then again fell flat because, you know, at the, at the beginning of the year, uh, Saint Etienne was all on to get relegated and then they just cannot hang on uh, and a lot of trouble uh, ensuing there and for Bordeaux it's a steady 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 decline so with all the relegated teams now uh, one after the other Bordeaux uh, it's, 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 it's an absolute uh, dumpster fire uh, that club. Angers uh, was maybe flattering for a better, uh, looking at a better finish uh, for most of, of the time, but the end they ended up being exactly where, where they are. A good uh, start and, uh, you know, a, a middle, a uh, uh, third quarter of the season that was not, not, not good and then steady, uh, but never really in relegation trouble. Reims, uh, rather positive, slight improvement overall, um, which, which is good to see for such a traditional club. Strasbourg, as I said, is the big, big, big winner. Uh, you just see from the expect, ex expected points, it was uh, just about 45 and then they finish with almost 6-6 six, six points. So a really, really good uh, run. At times, even uh, looking at a European finish, which did not happen. If you just look at the rating, how it's really a steady, 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 steady up. The question is, can it be sustained for another season? Lorient uh, at times looked like they were going down. Um, Good start and big drop, really in relegation trouble, but in the end, never really in relegation trouble, to be honest. So, uh, must be seen as a success overall. Brest also looking like a relegated team, and then come November, uh, I think Romain Fevre uh, played really, really well, uh, had a big boost, and then uh, staying steady and a mid table finish uh, there. Not after the horror season from last season, uh, steady, steady, steady up, and of course culminating in a French Cup win. Trois always towards the bottom of the table, but honestly um, establishing themselves and in, in the end having a strong finish to stay in the league, also without any real trouble there. Um, similar story to Clermont, although not as safe, but again, you see the last bit, and this is the, 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 the decisive one, where they actually then uh, managed to stay in the league. So yeah, that concludes uh, our look at League 1, uh, and now we can go over to the Eredivisie, uh, same graphs as before. In the Champions League, we have in the group stage Ajax, the Dutch champions, however, they're not do a double winners because PSV uh, beat them in the final, uh, a rather interesting, interesting final, one has, has to say, uh, winning the Dutch Cup, but also finishing second in the league to qualify for the playoffs, like they did last year, where they just missed out on Benfica, which didn't seem quite fair, but then you see where Benfica went. Feyenoord with a pretty good resurgence, finish in the Europa League spots, um, and then Twente and AZ finish out uh, the Conference League spots. Relegation, uh, Zwolle, Willem Dwey and Heracles, as we'll see, Heracles was a real so, so, so surprise, they totally fell into it. Coming up, we have Emmen and Volendam, and then in the playoffs, uh, Excelsior, actually uh, third team from Rotterdam, making uh, it back into the league. If we look at winners and losers, it's pretty clear there's one huge winner. Twente, with positive season definitely for PSV and Feyenoord. I think this is where we can obey it, basically. And for losers, it's actually not so much. Yes, Groningen should have probably finished better. Um, Sparta, but you know, you always, the, the clear losers are the three relegated teams. With Zwolle and uh, Her 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 Hercules being more expected than Willem Dway, who had a from the onset were not really looking safe. Um, it is the same point is driven home when I look at the, uh, the difference in the ratings 20, 20, 20, 20. Huge season 
finishing fourth, qualifying for the Conference League uh, rather easily. Uh, Feyenoord, uh, the other one, uh, that actually a little bit of a disappointment Over, overall. Um, uh, actually, the biggest disappointment if you look at the graph when we just uh, look at the ratings. The ratings, as I said, um, within the league, so it's only relative to each other, and I normed them between 0 and 100. So uh, just uh, to uh, complete that, I've said it in previous review videos, but uh, I just need to. I, I, I just want to reiterate that. Let's look at the individual seasons, and we'll start, of course, with the champions Ajax, who in the end had an overall successful season. You see on the right, the rating stays rather level, uh, tapering off a little bit at the end. Uh, Ajax brought the title over, over, over the line, but, but for me it was mostly uh, what happened in the, in, the, in the early season, that Ajax always was good for a bad loss. The one thing, though, that Ajax did is they twice won against uh, PSV, twice really um, uh, influenced by the, um, Europa, uh, the, the, the European schedule where uh, Ajax played on a Tuesday and PSV played on a Thursday, especially for the second one in uh, Eindhoven where they had to play overtime as far as I, 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 I remember. It was, that is basically what secured Ajax the title. It was a little bit of a struggle. You had the feeling that this Ajax that so played so brilliant in the Champions League, already in the league, they showed some weaknesses. In the end, they brought the title home, but it seemed a little bit like the end of an era in many, many ways. Still, they were and are the strongest team in the, Net in the, in the Netherlands, but PSV gave them a, a big, big, big um, challenge. And you can see that in, in the end, uh, it, uh, they just fell flat. I mean, they won the cup title, which was, uh, pro uh, which was great for them. Um, and they had the push towards the title, but they, uh, they just could not keep it up. And I think uh, the fact that Ajax got eliminated uh, earlier than uh, PSV from European comp competitions played a part in that. Um, at that, as I said, a rather disappointment. They were uh, slated for a top three finish. Now, points wise, they didn't disappoint, but if you look at the rating, it just went, went, went down, 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 down. Uh, a rather difficult season for them. Vitesse, similarly, uh, at one point, they were looking, this was the only non red team that actually were look, looking at uh, the European finish. But then again, uh, come uh, January, it just all went downhill uh, for them and they finished outside the European spots, you know, lo losing a playoff. Feyenoord, a really strong season. Uh, and there was a point where you could imagine that Feyenoord might challenge for a title, although the squad depth never, never was there. A uh, deep run in Europe probably also didn't really help making it to the Conference League final where they just fell, uh, uh, fell short in that sense, but uh, as a cherry on top of it, they actually finish in the rating second uh, in Holland at the moment. Yes, a little bit boosted by the European performance, but Feyenoord, a uh, really, really positive comeback season under Arne Slot. Utrecht, uh, yeah, um, more or less going down. Uh, Groningen, I said it or, or, or already, it doesn't look so bad in the points because it's just at the end, it kind of fell flat for Groningen where they could have made a better finish. Um, Sparta were long in relegation trial, but a very strong finish keep them in. Uh, Heracles, you, you, you can see they looked safe at the beginning of May and they went into the relegation. Into the relegation, uh, a team that you know, steady the de de declare, but you just thought at the beginning of May that they might have done enough. No, they are now down. 20 big winners. I mean, uh, no matter the graph, yes, it looks more dramatic because the league, like the French league, is very dense, especially outside of the top teams where Twente just went into. The bottom half of, of the league is rather, rather dense to together, as, as also seen. But Twente really, really pushing themselves into the top teams of the Netherlands this time around. Sittard just got it done towards the end. Uh, other than that, they were always uh, in trouble. Herrenveen, uh, you know, a season that didn't go anywhere, to be honest. Um, Zwolle, uh, a similar fashion. Kind of, uh, you know, they fell early into the relegation and they never really got out, out of it. Although, if you look at the ratings, they were never the worst team. It's just that the results didn't go their way. Willem Dwey uh, had a big win against uh, PSV uh, very early in the season. You really thought maybe mid-table finish and now it's relegation. Even a strong finish could not save them. 
uh, Volvike just uh, escaped. They seem, seem to be always a team that could go down, but no, staying in there. Cambuur promoted team actually had a pretty good season, of course, um, a good start. It's always hard to keep keep them up, up, up for promoted team, but they were never in relegation trouble as were the go-ahead Eagles. Um, although rating-wise, you see they were actually in relegation trouble there and the season did not finish well. Uh, and NEC, uh, very same thing, always kind of safe there. So, ran through all the, all of the teams, review is done. Please let, let me know what you thought about the season in these two uh, leagues. Um, uh, do, do you agree with my winners and losers that my model spit out? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click that little bell. So in order to stay updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a good day.